Please be sure that you've watched my other video on the IDE design process before watching this one. So how do you go about designing a problem-based authentic learning unit, which is at the core of the Learner Active Technology-Infused Classroom? You can use our design process, working individually or in a team. First, formulate your problem, meaning what is it you're trying to accomplish? Perhaps the real-world authentic need to propel your students to new achievement heights. So what is the content for a four to five week chunk of time in your curriculum? Just looking at the four core subjects in this video, it might be the Earth's sustainability and human impact, mythology, feudalism, or 3D geometry. In your design journal, which may be paper or digital, write down the major topics you want to cover, then the standards and more learning objectives. Get a good sense of the content you wish to cover. Think about your students. Now, I believe students are capable of accomplishing anything, so we're not going to focus on their perceived ability, but you do need to think about what they already know about this topic. Where is your starting point? Is this brand new information, or have they had some background in a prior grade or earlier in the year? Think about the next generation science standards cross-cutting concepts. How do you see any of these reflected in your content? Again, keep track of your thoughts in your design journal. If you're teaching in a STEM or STEAM school, do you see science or the scientific process within your content? And how about the math practice standards? These standards definitely cross curricular lines. Once you have sufficiently formulated your unit needs, step two is to explore your topic in terms of its real-world application. Why do students need to know this content? How will it enhance their lives? How is the content used in the real world? How does the content relate to students' lives? Write down your ideas in your design journal. To explore how your topic relates to the real world, just Google it or use an internet search engine of your choice. Look through newspapers and magazines. Often you'll find that current events link to your content. Spend some time exploring until you jump to step three. And then go ahead and generate ideas. If your students knew all of the content you want to teach, what could they do with it? What problem could they solve? Think of problems that are authentic, meaning that they do exist in the real world, or in fantasy for young students, or science fiction. Relevancy is a tougher objective. I don't believe all content will fit within problems that are actually relevant, that is, happening in your students' lives. But if you can, that's a bonus. Definitely design problems that are open-ended, where there is not one right answer, but rather where students have to apply the content to generate a new idea or solution. And don't stop at the first idea. This is your time to engage in divergent thinking, which is not a typical act in the field of teaching. If you feel outside of your comfort zone, that's okay. Suspend disbelief. Don't rush to embrace the first problem you find. Try to think of at least three different problems that would apply to the same content. And avoid saying no and judging any idea. The more you let your mind roam, the better. You may find that you need to go back and explore more about your content and its connection to the real world. Once you have some ideas, the next step is to sift through them to select the best. Eliminate any that you do not feel sufficiently cover the content or could not be modified to do so. Eliminate any that are unfeasible. Eliminate any that have students focusing too much outside of your content area. If you can't settle on one of your ideas, you might want to explore your content further or generate more ideas. Call for help from colleagues, as often two heads or three or four are better than one. Once you have a good problem-based task statement that will hook your students and drive them into your content, it's time to write it up so that you can try it out. Give it wings. As you write your task statement for your students, consider the following. What's going to grab their attention? What's going to make them go, oh? It's usually compelling facts and statistics. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words, and so are graphics, charts, and infographics. Relate it to your students' lives. Avoid saying, you've been hired by, because they haven't. It's not real. However, scenarios are fine. What if? Suppose, then at least your students know they are picturing themselves in another situation. Stop short of your teacherness. 
As soon as you are ready to start doling out the assignments, stop. What I mean is, avoid saying, you and your partner, or first you will research. Just seek to drive them wild with the challenge of the task. You still have the rubric and your activity lists to fill with curriculum and assignments. Now I will say that coming up with a compelling task is the messiest part of designing an authentic learning unit. You may have to return to some earlier steps of the design process. And you may feel like a failure at times, but you're not. Just persist. Once you have your task, the rest is going to move along much more easily and quickly. It may seem like there's a lot left to do, but trust me, the task is the hardest part. Just to give you an overview of the big picture, though, you'll create a rubric to provide your students with clearly articulated expectations. You'll brainstorm a set of rich and diverse opportunities for students to learn, and from that you'll develop activity lists to guide your students, usually through a day or more at the elementary level and a week or more at the secondary level. You'll identify or develop learning activities for direct instruction and practice activities. You may have a lot you've already used. You'll design a facilitation grid for formative assessment and facilitation questions to probe student thinking. You'll think through lessons that you want to teach to the whole class that focus on concepts. And you'll think through lessons you want to present to small groups of students who need the same level of skill instruction. Once you've implemented your authentic learning unit with your students, you'll most likely want to revise it. Once you do, it's time to share it with the world. Obviously, you'll share it with school colleagues, but perhaps across your district or state, or post it online for other teachers to use, and maybe even publish a book. As I always say, go change the world.